we'll pick up from that. Welcome to Boomstick Gaming, this is Alex, and I was lucky enough to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla early from the comforts of my own home, allowing me to deep dive into the new brutal and quick dual-wielding focus combat system, which is the star of today's breakdown. I tried to extract as much useful info as I could from my hands-on, and managed to figure out some cool stuff you can do, like custom combos, attack cancelling, which can make the game feel super snappy, some neat tricks while dual wielding, and a few other fun details, which I will all be highlighting. I'm hoping all of this gives you a better idea of what to expect from the combat portion of the game, and perhaps make you even better at it by knowing the basic and advanced mechanics prior to release. Now let's get straight into the carnage, as I attempt to viscerally dissect the non-stealthy side of combat in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Starting with the absolute basics first, each weapon type has light and heavy attack strings that each have their very specific uses in battle. There is a stamina style system in place in Valhalla, indicated by the blue meter under your health, and some of your stronger attacks and dodging will use this up, but your light attacks, if they connect, help to quickly refill this resource. This makes it so you cannot entirely mash your way through the game, but it's also not so harsh as to constantly halt you from being able to do at least basic attacks. As for your heavy strikes, those are great at stunning enemies and breaking their shields, which seems like a very popular item in the opposition's arsenal, since there are many shield bearers in these Viking times. No, I cannot confirm if that is historically accurate. One of the biggest changes for Valhalla is dual wielding, which functions similar to having two active weapon builds you can swap out to mid-battle. Your off-handed weapon does not get its own entire moveset, and instead has its own unique special attack, which is usually quite stamina hungry, functioning as your third main attack button. These vary from weapon type to weapon type, and some can even be altered depending on your opposite hand weapon. When wielding two one-handed axes for example, this turns the move into an even more barbaric double chopping spree. Your shield is interesting because, well, it can be used as a shield to block, but cooler than that, if you swap it into your primary hand, you get a full moveset of attacks and combos just like the other weapons. The shield in my main hand was actually one of my favorites from the bunch, since it had some pretty quick to activate strikes in its combos, but its downside was definitely its lacking reach. Another cool element to the dual wielding system I figured out is actually going bare fisted in your main hand. This also has its own unique moveset, but some hits in its strings will surprisingly utilize your offhanded weapon during them, which is awesome since that axe in my alternate hand right now is normally a two hander. The weapons that do require two hands while they're in your main hand get their own unique special move on what normally would be your offhand attack button, and all of the weapon types can actually parry with a tap of the same button. Parries are quite effective in this since much of your defensive capabilities are only dodging and countering unless you opt to keep a shield in your offhand to hold up a traditional block. Parries seem to often but not always stun enemies which opens them up for a devastating stun attack. Stun attacks are not exclusive to performing parries, and enough standard attacks can also set up your opponents for a glorious one-way trip straight into Valhalla. A personal favorite of mine of third-person melee combat systems is being able to create custom strings by alternating between light and heavy attacks mid-combo. Valhalla has this, and lets you string together the most optimal attacks from your preferred weapon's moveset, and figuring out which attacks to weave in and which ones to leave out of combos is where much of your personal weapon mastery comes into play. Once I get more hands-on time with all of the weapon types around launch, I will likely make a breakdown of all of my favorite custom combos for each type, similar to what I did for Odyssey, but I didn't quite have enough time to get that detailed for this. Next, another big thing that will dictate your general overall skill in battle is properly utilizing attack cancelling with your literally life-saving dodge move. If you have enough stamina to do so, you can dodge cancel out of nearly any attack, which can turn the combat in Valhalla from fairly standard speed to quite fast, if you choose to master this. This is especially useful for cancelling out of your attacks that would normally have some of the longer ending lag, further improving how effective your combo game is. 
You can really get creative with use of canceling and combo into most anything you could want, which can make the combat quite satisfying once you really try to peel back and find that extra layer of depth it's hiding. It was smart to tie dodging to your stamina resource because of this built-in canceling mechanic, because otherwise, you could just indefinitely blur around the battlefield, but you still kinda can for at least some quick bursts of offense. Speaking of offense, it's time to finally put my foot down and talk about stomps. Great writing. Stomp is one of the earliest skills in the bear skill line, and you'll likely be doing it or see it pop up and tempt you quite often. Somewhat similar to the stun attack from earlier, this will only be available when enemies are knocked down, allowing for you to inflict massive Viking footwear damage. Let's now take a look at some of the active abilities you can assign to either the left or right triggers to do some of the fancier ranged and melee attacks. Rush and Bash lets you grab and carry enemies to smash them into walls, or you can use it to just fling them off ledges. Throwing Axe Fury will toss out a barrage of little axes at nearby victims, simple but effective. Dive of the Valkyries lets you fly through the air toward an enemy, and all of these abilities will utilize the yellow charges above your health bar that refill from attacking. To further add to your combo game, these can be used as attack openers or cancelled out into in the middle or end of combos. Those were just a few examples of the active abilities I got to try out in Valhalla, and they all seem to have different applications for different combat scenarios and were quite effective. I think with that, that pretty much wraps up most of the core combat mechanics in Valhalla, but if you want to stick around a little while longer, I'm now going to get into what I think about all of what I just explained. Valhalla's combat seems to be straddling the line between arcadey and methodical, where it still wants to be fairly quickly paced and accessible, but also have some restraints so battles still feel like they have a weight and impact. It hits that middle ground fairly well, trying to appease both audiences, and it's not the deepest combat out there, nor is it the most shallow, but it does have a nice flow to it that makes it easy to just have fun playing around with it. The dual wielding mechanic is a really solid new addition, and I think it's hiding even more complexity to it than even what I covered here. Certain attacks and combos for your main and offhand movesets would slightly differ according to the two weapons you are wielding I noticed, and I'm hopeful there are tons of weapon classes to experiment with in this one to try and find the best synergies. The stamina system seemed decently well balanced, nowhere near trying to say they made it souls-like or anything, but it does make you have to consider balancing out saving up for those big attacks, or saving it for evasion and attack cancelling. Now to try and condense down all of my final overall thoughts on a little of everything from what I got to play, comparing it directly to 2018's AC Odyssey, Valhalla's combat feels a little deeper and faster paced, with a larger emphasis on having to break through a lot of shielded enemies, and the world design seems much more focused this time around. The big points of interest around the map were spread out much more evenly, and I feel like this entry should have somewhat less of a feeling of repetition since it isn't trying to distract you every few seconds. This makes cool little castles and other landmarks piercing the horizon really stand out and spark that curiosity to explore them. I particularly like the region I got to play around in during my hands-on demo because it looked downright breathtaking at times, and the medieval vibe was a good change of pace. I was left feeling pretty positive on the game for my brief time with it. It still has months of polish ahead of it prior to launch, but it's seeming like a good old fashioned open world action RPG when you really break it down to its core elements. Like I mentioned briefly at the start, I got to play this sitting at my own desk in my own chair since Ubisoft was streaming it over the internet to me through their machines over Parsec, which was a really cool way to be able to try something this early within the confines of my own home. Would definitely do again. Let me know what you think of what I showed off here today, if you found any of this to be useful, or if it gave you a better feel of the gameplay without getting hands on it yourself. My channel functions off of your direct feedback, since it's just me doing my natural passion and making videos about it, so let me know what else you would like to see from me in the future. Thanks for giving this a watch all the way up to the very end, you have a healthy attention span, and I'll be seeing you in Valhalla. The game, not the afterlife thing. Stay alive. See ya.